Now we will talk about how the male gametophyte is formed inside the anther and inside that male gametophyte how the male gamete formation takes place. So we are going to cover a wide range of topics over here where we will reach the stage at which the pollen grain is being formed and inside that pollen grain we are going to see the structures in next lessons but for now we have to talk about microsporogenesis what it is where it takes place and how the course of events is taking place in this entire process first thing is that microsporogenesis leads to the formation of microspore now what is this microspore in simple terms you can learn the name pollen grain now this pollen grain is the microspore, it is the haploid part of the female, oh sorry, male flower, okay, it is the haploid part, part. so it happens to be the gametophyte, <coughs> right, so what is the gametophyte? Over here, the male gametophyte, I would say, the male gametophyte in a flower is the pollen grain. Of course, it is gametophyte, so it is going to be haploid and the other name is microspore. Now, how is this formation taking place? Where is this formation taking place? This takes place inside the anther. Now, if you remember, when we saw the typical structure of a flower, we saw that anther is something like this. The male part of the flower is a filament and anther. This was it. And over here, we had a diathecus anther. This made the male part of the flower. Now, what you are going to see and study is this part. This anther, which is diathecus, it is going to house certain tissues which will give rise to the microspores. And how many microspores? They could be numerous, hundreds and thousands. So, we have to see this anther and when we see like this, supposedly this is the diathecus anther, we see its transverse section, it is like this, one theca and another theca. Diathecus, sorry, bilobed, two lobes, and each lobe <coughs> here. This is diathecus condition, and we have two lobes in each theca. So we have four lobes in total now this is this butterfly like structure is the anther being observed like this transverse section of the anther now what you see over here is the outermost layer we have many layers over here we had talked about anther we are going to talk about few layers <coughs> just I am going to consider a little bit of part of it not much <coughs> this part has a lot of tissues called connective tissues. For general idea purpose, I am doing this so you get an idea where this microsporogenesis is taking place. This would be covered by all <coughs> similar tissue arrangement. This is the line of dehiscence. I hope you remember the previous lesson where we had talked about the structure, anatomical aspects of this 
anther. Now we have uh, endothesium, we have middle layers, we have tapetum that is being represented over here. We are concerned about this region and this region has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of sporogenous tissue. This part is having sporogenous tissue. Okay, entire structure is similar. We have this lobe that is present inside each theca, two lobes. We have this entire structure of anther, outermost layer being endothesium. Then we have middle layers. We have discussed this already, the repetition we are doing. And then we have the nourishing layer that is known as tapetum. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it all over again for the reference purpose where we discussed the structure of an anther and we studied the layers. Now this sporogenous tissue, as you know, this entire anther is sporophyte part. So the sporogenous tissue is 2N. <coughs> that means it is diploid. Now what happens inside this sporogenous tissue is, is that it undergoes differentiation. It forms lot many mitotic outcomes. That means it undergoes lots and lots of mitosis. It forms many pollen mother cells. Now the other name for pollen mother cells, I am going to rub this. Other name for pollen mother cells is microspore mother cells. The sporogenous tissue takes its nourishment from tapetum. It forms, it uh, differentiates into microspore mother cells. These microspore mother cells now would undergo meiosis. These are 2N. When they undergo meiosis, as you know, meiosis results in the formation of four cells. So each microspore mother cell would form a pollen tetrad, four cells which are joined to each other. Later they undergo dehiscence or you can say they get rid of the water that is present that is joining them. They dry up and each part of the tetrad becomes the future pollen grain. Now this is microspore tetrad, four cells are being formed individually each one of them is N haploid and we have reached the stage where the pollen grain or the microspore is being formed. This microspore is haploid in its composition. Now what happens to this pollen grain? Soon this tetrad gets rid of whatever moisture is present and they separate individually. Each pollen grain now has to undergo further divisions which would be mitotic in nature and from here the story of gametophyte begins and the gametophyte would give rise to the male gametes. Okay. Now, we seek male gametes whenever we talk about microsporogenesis. Where are those male gametes formed? They are going to be formed in pollen grain. Let us talk about the structure of pollen grain first. This is the inner layer known as intine. It is surrounded by another layer rich in a compound known as sporopollenin. Okay, this layer is called exine, the outer one, the inner one is called intine. One thing you have to remember is that this exine is made up of a highly enzyme resistant substance known as sporopollenin. Now, such is the strength of this substance that it cannot be digested by any enzyme. Like if I have to put it in other words, I would say that no living enzyme or you can say no enzyme in this living world can digest sporopollenin. We haven't discovered any such enzyme. So this is probably the strongest biological material that we have. Now the sporopollenin is absent at one point 
and that is known as germ pore. This is the external composition of a pollen grain. What lies inside? It was a haploid nucleus that was present inside. Of course, it is going to have lot much of nutritious material inside it. So, this is what pollen grain is all about. This is the microspore that we had to achieve. Now, from this microspore, we have to obtain male gamete. And if you remember the introduction, we said that there are two male gametes that are being formed. Two male gametes would be formed from one pollen. This you have to remember. That one pollen would give rise to two male gametes. Of course, they would be male. Okay. One pollen is going to give rise to two male gametes. So, we are going to revise before we come how gametes are being formed to that topic. We see that we had lot much of sporogenous tissue that had microspore mother cells okay they differentiated from that sporogenous tissue which lied inside the anther now each microspore mother cell is undergoing meiosis and it is forming four pollen grains now each pollen grain is going to give rise to two gametes so you can make it out that one microspore mother cell is going to give rise to eight male gametes if it undergoes the entire process successfully. Now, what is the remaining part of the process? This was the pollen grain that we had discussed about. Now, this pollen grain has to undergo mitosis. I am going to get rid of all this so that we have an idea what we are talking about. Now, what happens in this pollen grain is that it undergoes mitosis. As you know, mitosis results in the breaking of nucleus into two and it forms two different nuclei. Later on, that division of nucleus is followed by cytokinesis and what we get as a result is a spindle shaped generative cell and a huge vegetative cell. This pollen is entirely like that only like this. Okay. This is the generative cell, the division that takes place as a result of mitosis is not equal. It is in such a way that you have a large generative cell and a small spindle shaped vegetative cell. Oh. Pardon me, it is wrong. You have a large vegetative cell that would be responsible for <coughs> nourishment of a small spindle shaped generative cell. Now, this generative cell is supposed to undergo another mitotic division and form two male gametes. The two resultant cells which are formed are known as male gametes. So, this generative cell would undergo division. I am going to represent it over here in such a way that you have two male gametes being formed and a vegetative cell that is present for nourishment of the male gametes. So, we started with an anther with sporogenous tissue, one microspore mother cell and we have eight gametes in the end. If you can just calculate what we are dealing with. We had one microspore mother cell that gave rise to four pollen grains. Those pollen grains are going to give rise to two male gametes per pollen grain I am talking about. Now, these two male gametes which are being formed from the generative cell, this is one and this is one. So, these are male gametes, okay, both of them. Now, it depends on the type of the flower or the family to which it belongs that whether the generative cell stage would be shed or the two male gamete stage would be shed. Now, what that means? The pollen grains, they are dehiscized. How they are dehiscized? The entire anther, it bursts up and the pollen grains are released. Now, that pollen grain once released could be released at this stage when the gametes are not formed, only generative cell is there or they could be released at this stage when the gametes have been well formed. So, this thing you have to keep in mind depending upon the families, different families in the plants and flowering plants rather, the there is a 60 percent probability that the pollens would be shed at this stage. 
okay remaining 40 percent would be shed at this stage so when the dehiscence occurs either in the microsporogenesis process the pollen could have reached at this stage beginning from those which i have rubbed or it could be at this stage which is the final stage when both the male gametes have been formed so this is all about microsporogenesis where we started with the sporogenous tissue giving rise to number of pollen grains those pollen grains further undergoing mitosis and forming the gametes and as in the end i told you it could be at this stage or this stage that the pollens could be shed and when uh, when shed at this stage the pollen germinates or i would say this male gamete is formed on the stigma all right when the male comes in contact with the male gametophyte it comes in contact with the female part of the flower then this mitotic division takes place in those 40 percent cases where the pollens are shed at this stage so this comes this brings us to the end of the topic microsporogenesis